Hello everyone. Welcome to the next video of uh, Excel IEL Physics Unit 2. In the first video, I gave you model answer for MCQs. Uh, in this video, I'll give you the model answer for rest of the question. So let us start. This is uh, question number 11. A student draws uh, the pattern found by standing waves on a string. So this is standing waves. Determine the wavelength of the wave. So now we have uh, three loops. If you see loop number one, loop number two, and loop number three. And we know that distance between two consecutive nodes is always half of the wavelength of this wave. So we can write that the total length of three loops is lambda is, L is equal to three lambda by two. And lambda is equal to uh, twice length of the three. So if you put the numbers, twice times of uh, 96, which is in fact the length of the three loops divided by three. If you solve, so lambda will give you 64 centimeter. This is the wavelength. Let's see the next part, part B. W and X are points on the string. State the phase difference between W and X. So this is a, a standing wave and a standing waves is the oscillation of the whole loop ups and, ups and down. So if you see the W, W is coming down. Sorry for that. W is coming down and X could be moving up as part of the oscillation of the system. They are moving in in opposite direction. So the phase difference between W and X would be 180 degree or you can say pi radian. It's all because of exactly opposite motion. Okay, describe how a standing waves is formed. So we can say that uh, if one wave is moving right and another coherent wave moving left. So this wave is moving rightward, this moving is moving, this, the second wave is, wave is moving leftward. When they overlap or uh, they interfere or superpose, they give us the pattern of the, what we see, the standing waves. So we can say that two waves moving in opposite direction, when they overlap, they give us the pattern of constructive and destructive interference and this will cause a, a standing waves. So here we can write the answer. The two coherent waves moving in opposite direction interfere with each other, uh, give a pattern of nodes and anti nodes or you, if you wish you can strike constructive and destructive interference. Okay. Next question, question number 12. Uh, sensors can be fitted to the rear bumper of the car to help the driver reverse the car safely. The sensor emits ultrasound pulses, uh, pulses that hit the object uh, behind the car are reflected back to the sensor. The time taken for reflected pulse to return is measured so that the distance of the object can be measured. Part A states why it is necessary to emit the ultrasound pulses. It's a quite pet question whenever pulse and echo question comes and uh, this pet answer is we we make sure that uh, the first pulse return before sending to the next one or uh, uh, avoiding overlapping between two waves so here we can write the answer okay so the send pulse must return before the next one. This is the purpose of using pulses, not the continuous wave. Let's see the next question, part B. A car manufacturer claims that the sensors are able to detect objects uh, from a distance of 0.1 meter from the car. Calculate the maximum duration of the each pulse. A speed of sound in the air is 340 meter. It's a pulse and echo. And the most important concept that they want to check is whether you have a concept of pulse and echo. And remember, pulse and echo is if you have some device to send the pulse, it's 
will go hit the object and then return so the distance traveled by the pulse is twice of the d if we take the d is the distance one sided distance traveled by the wave so d is one sided and another d is one so the total distance is 2d so we must uh, use the formula v is equal to 2d over t and if you use this formula if you put if you rearrange for t so t will uh, give you 2d over v v is given and the distance one sided distance is 0.1 meter if you put the number you will have t is equal to 5.88 into 10 raised to the power minus 4 second or if you wish to round it off you can say that t is 0.6 millisecond so this is the duration Part C, I uh, suggest why sensor may not help the driver when reversing towards an ascending ramp. Okay, so here is a case. This is ascending ramp. If the pulse is sent, there is a chance that the pulse uh, would not reflect back. Instead, it will diverge in any other direction. So it will not receive by the sensor to detect the distance so here I, the pulse does not reflect back to the sensor instead it will diverge suggest why uh, the reason why sorry sorry for that suggest why the sensors may not help the driver when reversing towards the thin post it's a thin post okay so there is a chance Due to thin post, the the sent pulse, the incident pulse will not hit the the post, and it will not reflect back. There's a chance, so there will be no or very little reflection. You can write, or I guess you can say that if uh, the the size of the post is equal to the the wavelength of the pulse, there is a chance that the pulse get diffracted. This is question number 13. Okay. So the diagram shows some of the energy levels of uh, hydrogen. These are energy levels. Okay, zero electron volt. Okay, state what is meant by the ground? Uh, uh, meant by ground states of an atom. Ground state, the lowest possible energy that uh, uh, an electron can have in an atom. So we can say that the lowest possible energy level for an electron or for an atom is the ground state. Identify the transition which uh, would result the emission of a light of the wavelength 660 nanometer. Emission of the light. What happens when photon jumps from some higher, some higher level to the lower level, it emits a photon of some energy. So we are given wavelength what do we do? The, for me, the easiest way is uh, first I find the frequency f is equal to uh, c by lambda, this uh, common formula. And if you use the wavelength 660 nanometer, so you can have uh, the frequency of this emitted radiation is uh, 4.54 into 10 to the power 40. Hertz. And using this frequency, I can find the energy. 
is equal to hf planck's equation h is the planck's constant if you multiply planck's constant which is 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 times this frequency which is f that we found in the in the previous step so energy i can have is uh, Three. Uh, if I just let me just calculate. Okay. So the energy in electron volt I can have one point eight eight electron volt. Now if you round it off, it's one point nine electron volt. So quickly we can find the differences between any two quickly so we can find that the if we subtract 3.9 3.39 and 1.15 so difference between these two is 1.9 that means we can have a transition from minus 1.51 to minus 3.39 electron volt so you can say that the transition from minus 1.51 to minus 3.39 electron volt. Okay. This is C part. Okay. Uh, so a hydrogen atom is in its ground state. A photon with frequency of 5.4 times the power 15 hertz is absorbed and uh, the atom becomes ionized. Calculate the kinetic energy in joule uh, of the release electron. So the situation is we have an electron because they are saying in a ground state. We have electron in the ground state. So electron is here and a photon from outside is absorbed. This is the photon that is coming. And is absorbed. The energy of the photon is E, uh, which is e is equal to HF. So when this electron absorbs energy E, out of the absorbed energy, some energy is used to come out or to overcome the nuclear force and air. After this, the electron will out of the atom and the atom becomes an ion. That means first we need to find the energy of incident photon and this energy we can find easily E is equal to HF uh, equal and if you use H as a Planck's constant and F is the frequency of incident photon this is the frequency F if you put these number so you can have energy E is equal to uh, let me just calculate 3.58 into 10 raised to the power minus 18 joule. Okay, because we need to give answer in joule, so I'm not converting it into electron volt. And after this, we need to find how much energy this electron need to overcome the nuclear forces to come out from uh, the atom and the total energy is if you see this is zero this is 13.6 so 13.6 electron volt needs to convert into joule and if you do this a step so 13.6 converting into joule it will give you 2.2 into 10 rest of the power minus 18 U. So this is the amount of energy that an electron needs to come out from the atom. So out of absorbed energy, this is the absorbed energy and this is energy required to come out from the atom. So the difference between these two energy would be the kinetic energy of the release electron. So kinetic energy would be equal to 
3.58 minus 2.2 we don't need to take care of because 10 to the powers are same we just subtract these two so the kinetic energy of release electron would be 1.4 into 10 to the power minus 18 Okay, so let's see the next part, part D. Uh, when white light is passed through hydrogen gas, the emerging light produces an absorption spectrum. Explain why certain wavelengths are missing from the emerging light. It's again a typical question that generally comes in exam and it deals with the discussion of energy level and absorption of photon. Some certain energy levels are present and uh, uh, electron go to the higher level and then come out these kinds of stuff that's how we write the answer so hydrogen atom consists of discrete energies or you can say discrete energy level when the white light passes through the gas some of the photons are absorbed by their hydrogen atom so those photons which are absorbed if you wish you can add this sentence uh, those photons which are absorbed uh, we have a missing line for uh, these absorbed photons okay that's it for this video this part uh, in the next video i will give you rest of the question thank you very much see you next video